Hi everybody and uh, welcome to the next broadcast from uh, Cafe LA and uh, we are here in lockdown for the uh, coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic at the moment. Claire and I are here on Van Henri um, so that's why um, we're here on our own not at the coffee shop. Um, that's why my hair is a shocking mess because like the rest of the planet I need a haircut right now so uh, Apologies for that. Uh, but that being said, we thought what a great opportunity to just show you how we make uh, the coffee, whether you come and see us here on Van Henri or whether you come and see us at Cafe LA Beaver Castle. In both cases, we use an espresso machine. And um, well, uh, the first thing to say, I guess, is um, espresso, it is espresso with an S, not expresso with an X. Uh, and that's because, like all good relationships, uh, in good coffee, no X's are involved. So uh, that's one to remember. Now, the main advantage of uh, espresso coffee, as the name suggests, is speed, right? Because we can brew your coffee in about 25 to 30 seconds, and that's way faster than any other brewing method. But there are advantages um, otherwise too. Um, so in that brewing method with espresso, you're extracting the flavor from the coffee, um, you're extracting texture and body, and the resulting coffee is very intense and very flavorsome. And I guess that's why you know, espresso, espresso coffee's been the cornerstone of coffee shop drinks for you know, decades now. Um, and it's what, we, what many people love when they drink coffee. So uh, without further ado, um, let's introduce you to the coffee machine on board Van Henri here and we're going to just uh, take some time and show you its quirks and features and we're going to just show you how this machine works as well in practice. This machine is a Fraschino and uh, despite the Italian sounding name it's actually built in Birmingham um, and when I say built I, I really do mean built. I mean they produce everything for this machine apart from the pump I believe. They literally manufacture the nuts and bolts they form the copper tubing, uh, they make the copper boilers in-house, um, everything. So it's quite an impressive operation. And um, this machine we love. And in fact, the story goes that Frank Maxwell, the company founder, um, he had a family holiday to Italy. Uh, this is going back sort of 60 years. Um, brought a esp uh, espresso machine back home with him, stripped it down, thought, I can do better than this. And, and maybe he could because the company is still going today. Um, so this machine here, um, it can run on mains power of course, but it can also run on liquid petroleum gas, um, which is brilliant at an event because we can hook up to the gas if there's no mains power and still produce fabulous coffee for you. It weighs about 55 kilograms, it takes all the knocks and bangs of mobile catering and um, therefore if, um, if you're mobile catering, the smart money goes on a Fraschino machine. Um, how much smart money? about £4,000 I would say including the VAT, um, so it's an expensive investment and to that end we do have Fraschino's own engineers come out once a year to service the machine, they also certify the boiler which we need to do for safety reasons. Um, at the shop, just in case you're wondering, we have an Italian machine uh, made by Nuova Simonelli and it's sleeker, it looks sexy but fundamentally with one small difference which I'll explain in a minute, it works in the same way. Now you might be wondering, does the coffee taste any different from the machines? And we had this unique opportunity to test that because we could take Van Henri with this machine, the Fraschino, to our roast house in Nottingham, 200 degrees, and we could put the machine back to back with the Simonelli machine we ended up buying and also a very high-end machine uh, that they had in stock at the time. And with all the other variables being constant, you know, the coffee, the grinder, everything, uh, we could taste the coffee. And the, the coffee from the Simonelli, I have to say, did taste fractionally better. Um, and we know that Simonelli, um, their, their machines are used in the Barista World Championships. So that kind of swayed it a little bit for us as well. And they've been making machines for even longer than Fushino. Um, so there you go. should also mention water quality. Under here, I won't show you because it's pretty boring, but there's a water filtration unit. Um, we need good coffee, um, we, sorry, we need good water um, to brew good coffee. And the same goes at the shop, um, there's a filtration unit there underneath the machine, except at the shop we do use beaver spring water rather than mains water, which does taste a little bit better. Um, so water's critical, so it is, um, goes without saying really, good beans, good coffee beans. We use coffee roasted in Nottingham by 200 degrees. Um, we've been to the roast house and met the head roaster Mike several times. The, the care they take over sourcing the beans uh, uh, and then just roasting the coffee super consistently and really, really well um, is self-evident. So we use 200 degrees for our house blend for sure. Okay, um, so that is the coffee. Um, let's start with looking at the machine in more detail then. This is the group handle and it lives here to keep you hot between brewing shots. Um, and next, 
will unclip the group handle. There's a porter filter basket and it's very important that we just clean that and wipe that between every shot because we're removing the oil and debris um, between the shots in that way. And when it's clean, we're going to get better coffee. Um, and uh, let's grind the coffee for you now. So we uh, invest in pretty expensive grinders at Cafe LA. This exact grinder is the same kind of grinder, the exact model that you'll see in the shop. And it's called On Demand, and I'll show you why. Because basically you start with the beans up here um, from our roast house, um, and it will grind just the right amount of coffee we need um, into the porter filter here. Uh, we're grinding it fresh for your shot. That's important because the moment you grind, grind coffee and expose it to air, it starts to degrade. So you really want your coffee being ground as freshly as this uh, to make it taste incredible. And next we tamp the coffee, we call this tamping, and we just apply some pressure um, into here like this. And we try and tamp it evenly. And you can see that that's sitting really evenly in the bed now. Okay, and the pressure, the amount of pressure you exert when you tamp isn't that important. You're just trying to squeeze the air out because, as I'll explain in a moment, the machine is actually putting far more pressure through this coffee in a moment than I could apply by hand, I would suggest. Okay, next you bless the coffee. That's just to remove any traces of coffee uh, here on the edge so we're getting a really good seal between this, uh, this group handle uh, and the group seals on the machine. Okay, and then between every shot, we just run some hot water through the group head. And that's partly just to flush out any residue from the previous shot, partly it's to bring the brewing temperature from the water to the correct level, um, because you, you want it slightly cooler uh, than it would naturally come from the boiler, about 90 degrees. Okay, so here's what happens then, um, and hopefully Claire can show you, there's a shower plate head underneath here. Um, it's incredibly finely calibrated. There are holes of a fifth of a millimetre in diameter there, um, included and basically that's just dispersing the water under immense pressure um, through the coffee so you've got, got really even extraction. Okay um, so here's what happens we insert the porter filter like that and it's loaded with very finely ground coffee now and that's consistently heated like I said um, and now we're going to brew the shot and when you, we brew it the pressure is nine bars or 130 pounds per square inch in old money um, 130 psi. If you think your car tyres are typically uh, pumped up to about 30 psi, um, you can see that's immense pressure, right? And without that immense pressure, you're not going to get the flavour, you're not going to get the crema that you see on a really lovely espresso, which is kind of that layer of foam you see on the coffee, okay? So the pressure is really important. Um, we have a recipe from 200 degrees, our roasters, so we know how much coffee by weight should be going into the porter filter. Um, we know what volume of coffee we're looking uh, for at the end of the extraction time, and we know the extraction time for the optimum flavour. And in this case, it's 27 seconds. And at the start of each day, um, we dial in the coffee, we call it dialing in, so we check all those parameters really carefully. And in fact, sometimes through the day, um, we'll adjust that um, because you, know, you might see Jake or I whip out a stopwatch and just time the shot every so often through the day. Or visually, we'll just see that it's coming through a little too quickly, a little too slowly, because coffee's very volatile. It, it varies according to air pressure uh, and, and ambient temperature. Um, we know some coffee shops will only do that maybe once every few months when their equipment providers come out. We take it really seriously and we try and do it like you know several times a day. Okay, let's pull an espresso shot. And by the way, the coffee's been sitting here way longer than we normally would, but I just wanted to talk you through the process. Okay, and I'm going to start the shot and we'll time it as well. And what we're looking for here is nice, even extraction through the head. The coffee will sort of curve inwards like that. We call that a rat tail. The wind's blowing outside, so you're not getting the full effect here. Uh, but we're just going to brew it into a glass for you so you can see. This is a semi automatic machine. It's a bit old school, so we have to time the shot manually. Claire, you can uh, see there um, on the gauge, we're almost at nine bar of pressure there, which is pretty consistent for all espresso machines. When the timer shot stops, um, I'm going to stop the shot like that so we can take a look at it. Okay, and um, so as I say, semi-automatic machine, the Simonelli machine at the shop will automatically dose the right volume of coffee and then stop, um, so it's a bit simpler. And of course, while the barista's brewing that shot, simultaneously, if you'd ordered a latte or a flat white or any milk-based coffee, um, he or she will simultaneously be steaming the milk using the steam wand. Uh, there's a steam wand at either end of this machine. But we'll take you through steaming the milk, I think, in a different, uh, in a different, uh, uh, a different video. So here we've got our shot of espresso. You can see that crema we spoke of on the surface there. 
as well. And it's worth mentioning as well, like the steam ones, they're operating at about 100 degrees. So the boiler's very clever in that there's a heat exchanger in there where the brewing water temperature is about 90, but you get 100 degrees through that steam one from the same, the same boiler. Okay, we love this machine by the way, it can work flat out for hours at a time, you know, on a super busy event we'll have two baristas here, there's maybe myself and Jake or Claire or Lauren, and um, you know, we might have two shots going simultaneously through these heads, one of us might be working that steam wand, one the other, the grinder will be going and the machine will just keep up with that all day long. It's a brilliant machine. And I think the only control I haven't shown you is this spout in the centre right here. And all that does basically through this valve here, that dispenses like boiling hot water. <laughs> right over me if I'm not careful. But right there, there you go. So we can use that to, for hot water for teas and Americanos. And um, yeah, apologies for the health and safety glitch there. So that is the espresso machine in a nutshell. And should you buy one, for home use, um, sometimes people ask us, well, yeah, definitely you can get some really nice home machines. Um, but what we would say is like, um, it, there is a skill, as you've seen, to, to brewing perfect espresso. You get a very narrow window of time to get it right. And, and it, it's a skill, um, it's, you've got to be prepared for some trial and error. Um, you've got to be prepared to get to know your equipment well. And um, yeah, we of course train our baristas very carefully. Claire and I sometimes joke that the only people we didn't train well um, uh, and we're fully expert when we let them loose on the machine, we're Claire and I right at the outset, but we know better now, hopefully, certainly the team do, and they're all trained brilliantly um, by 200 degrees, in fact, um, and in-house too. Um, so yeah, you can get a home espresso machine. There's other ways of brewing great coffee at home. You can get great coffee from a cafetiere or a French press, uh, in other words, you can get great coffee from other devices too, like an AeroPress, which is almost mimicking an espresso machine in a very low cost sort of manual way. And hopefully in future videos, we can show you some of those devices too. So, as I say, ping us your comments, ping us your questions. I do hope you've looked, you enjoyed this look behind the scenes and at the other side of the coffee machine to the side you'd normally be seeing in the coffee shop. And uh, please, all of you, enjoy your coffee, stay safe, and hopefully see you soon.